Okay, here we have the tablet which is connected to the vehicle OBD port. It measures the CAN identifiers for all four wheels, the engine RPM, the throttle position, the steering angle, and also the GPS. So when we achieve a 15% difference between the wheel speed and the GPS speed, this is when we detect slip. So here what we need to do is very quickly do the aqua planning setup. It's a very simple process. We haven't yet learnt the track. The box is telling us the track is not learned, so we click start the learn process. Here we need to set the start point, which we do just as we approach the bath. This is a specially filled track, eight millimeters deep with water. The reason we're here is this is the best track in pretty much in the world, in my opinion. It's the most repeatable and it's the highest quality. So here we're going to set the start point in line with this bollard, so it's repeatable. Set the start point. Just as we go in, we're going to set the bath. Set the bath, and then we're going to drive to the end of the bath. Set the end point. That then locks this in as our track. There we go. It tells me the wheels are not calibrated, and it's using a default. So what we're going to do in a minute is calibrate the wheels. We do this every single time we change the wheels. And the benefit of this system is we can test much faster because we don't have external sensors on the wheels. So it's as simple as doing a normal braking stop. So straight ahead, begin calibration, calibrating. The wheels are calibrated and now we're ready to test. So now we're in position and it says test status is off. So we click start and now it's telling us waiting for the start position. So that's it, we're ready to test now. Aquaplaning is very important. It's one of the most important tests because if you're driving along the freeway and you go into a puddle of water you haven't seen, a better tire will resist the aquaplaning. It will push the water away and cut through more cleanly. And in that case, it's much safer for the driver when it can be done at a faster speed. So we will select the gear. This is our first run, so we're just gonna check, see which speed we need. We'll try gear four at a GPS 60 kilometers an hour. Apply full throttle and we accelerate until the vehicle begins to float. There it goes. So we can see our entry speed there is 82 kilometers an hour and the front left wheel aquaplaned when the vehicle was traveling at 84 kilometers an hour. So that is our first run complete. We'll undertake five tests to make sure that we have a nice average and then we will return and change the tire. Very simple, very easy to do. The reason we use the proving ground in Idiada in Spain, it's very similar for the same reasons we use the proving ground in Ivalo. Because these surfaces are so well maintained and because they're so in line with the industry standards, what we want to do is push the tire absolutely to the limit and if we take it to the limit here in a controlled environment and it performs well it's going to perform very well on the road what we're trying to do is move the margins up to create more safety for the customer there we go lovely and repeatable so the equipment works really well 85 kilometers an hour this was our first run through the bath at 84 kilometers an hour so i'd expect that that one kilometre there is actually because the water was ever so slightly over full. But anything within one kilometre an hour is incredibly accurate. Key to good results, not only do you need to use good equipment and have a professional driver, you must remove the external influence. By coming here, what we have is a very repeatable surface. So throughout the development and the product life cycle, we can continue to test we can come back, we can make changes, make improvements. And we know that the only thing that has changed has been the changes internally in the tire. And that's very important. Without that, you don't know which direction to take. You can't tune your product. You can't make it better if you don't know where you are and where you have been before. So this is why it's very critical that we undertake testing in a very good and managed proving ground. Again, 
84.5, very close results. This piece of equipment makes it very much easier to do this test and it immediately pays for itself within a few weeks just simply doing this testing, the time saved, the repeatability, the effectiveness and the accuracy of this really helps me and my customers when it comes to aquaplaning performance and tyre development. So here we can see how repeatable the results are. This piece of equipment really helps myself and my clients because it gives us a really accurate, repeatable and fast way of measuring aquaplaning performance. It saves so much time and effort and ensures the repeatability and with this we can really move forward with the tyre development. Another key piece to this is the equipment so well laid out and so organised through years of experience that you can send even an unqualified driver and the results are still insured. Look at that. 84, 85, 84, 84, absolutely perfect. Also, this gives me some information that the tyre, not only is this a good speed, 84 kilometres an hour is quite an effective speed for a tyre of this size and type, but also it continually, not only is the equipment reading the results well, if you have a tyre jumping up and jumping down, we know that there's some problems with it. There's a very nice close clean grouping here. One more test and we would be finished if this was live. You'll notice here as well we have the electronic stability control deactivated. The only thing controlling the car is the thing that's touching the ground, which is the tyre. If you have an electronic interface adjusting and amending what's going on, you don't get a clean and repeatable result. So in this case we've completely deactivated the electronic stability control system. I'm sure I get my repeatable entry speed. Lovely. So for me, that's test done. Five results, all well within a kilometre of each other. So I'm confident in the results. I'm confident in the equipment. I'm confident in the vehicle. I'm confident in the track and I'm confident in the test tyre. So for me, stop. <laughs>